everyone. Arwen Kathke from the Cardboard Time podcast here, and what a crazy time it's been in my life. This was much later than I was expecting. I was actually expecting to get home, basically do some video editing, and then release a video like the week after Gen Con. And sufficient to say it's been much later. I've since been to Dragon Con. I've since been to a proto spiel in Rochester. Went to a friend's wedding this past weekend. Got to see the Capstone Warehouse, which I will be posting a short form video on. But needless to say, this is much delayed and much, much later uh, than I thought it was going to be. So here it is. I still want to get it up. I still want to talk about my experiences at Gen Con and share what those look like. So thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for letting me take this long, long time. But here we go. Let's talk about Gen Con. Let's talk about what happened. And let's start with Wednesday. We dropped Charlie off. And then we drove to Indianapolis. And I really absolutely hate the traffic in Indiana. It is one of my least favorite states to drive in besides New Jersey. The trucks were just atrocious. It's like two lanes each way. And that was definitely the worst part of the drive for us. But fortunately, we were able to make it in relatively decent time. I did drop Allie off. She did need to get to the convention center for setup for what she was doing, and I wound up getting my hair done and had lunch with Carla and Justin of Weird Draft Games, which was so nice, and we got to chat for quite a while. After that, we went to the all-play event, and I got to play Things in Rings, which I was really looking forward to. In addition, they sent us home with a copy of River Valley Glassworks, which I will be talking about on a upcoming podcast episode. So let's get into Thursday. On Thursday, I did get to have breakfast with Liz Davidson, Chris High, Taylor Shushs, and Allie, and it was probably the best meal that we had all weekend long. I did promise I wouldn't divulge the name of the restaurant because we don't want a whole bunch of people showing up there, um, but I, I might tell you if you ask me. Just you know, trying to keep it on the down low. So then it was time to witness the running of the nerds. And this was way, way worse and way more chaotic than I remember it being in 2022. This year was a full convention again, as opposed to 2022, which was a little bit limited due to kind of coming back from COVID. So it was very, very crazy. It was very, very packed, and it was kind of stressful. I did get to walk around on Thursday and be a convention goer for once, which is kind of different for me. It is something that I've tried to do a little bit lately, is try to schedule some of that time to actually go and experience a convention for myself. It's an initiative that I'm doing this year, and I do think that it helps kind of put some things into perspective and maybe refocus me on trying to create content for all of you, getting it from a convention goer's experience. So that was really fun. It still amazes me that this convention is able to fill up a football stadium, a convention center, and multiple hotel ballrooms. It just speaks to the size and the craziness that Gen Con really has become. I did get to see a couple of fun games on Thursday that I do want to talk about, and we will start with Moon Bunny. This looked like an incredibly cute tile placement game. It's from the same team that produced Steam Up, and hopefully I get this out in time, that it will still be crowdfunding. I did put in for my copy of it as well, because it looked really, really cool. Sprocket Forge is all about adding, upgrading, and swapping gears out of a personal engine, and it looks very, very mechanically satisfying. This gets my engineer brain going and is one of those things that really interests me from that engineering and mechanical engine building perspective. Ada's Dream is another engine building game, and that's like a literal computer engine that we're talking about. It's a complex dice rondelle game about an alternate reality where Ada Lovelace finished her computer design 
Very heavyweight engine builder, but looks amazing. So I will be picking up a copy of this at some point. I will say that I might be the only one, but I am excited about Flavor Town Monopoly and Dune Risk. The op is working with some cool IPs, and you know, it's Flavor Town Monopoly. Come on. So more on the op later. But I did get to end my day in the convention center at Chip Theory Games. It was the only meeting that I did have that day. So I got to catch up with Andrew about some updates on the Elder Scrolls, which not only looked amazing at the time, but as you'll find out, I did get to take a copy home. 20 Strong Tanglewoods looks like it's going to bring a fresh spin to the series. My favorite component of that being a Slay the Spire-esque take on the game. They're also expanding their kids' line of games, including a new Reiner Knizia game. And then finally, Neon Rain was a game that I really wasn't terribly excited to see, but it wound up being a fantastic little two player card battler about making combos I was very very surprised by and it's a really great heads up game a lot of content that does come into this and I'm going to be picking up a copy of this for myself so that was Thursday and Friday started my two-day sprint of meetings I did get to start my morning at North Star, which besides nature has a couple of new games to show off. The first of which is Biomos, which is a game that's slightly reminiscent of Splendor. And the second being Sacred Valley, a tile placement game about farming in Peru during the Inca Empire. I will be reviewing Biomos on a future episode of Cardboard Time. 3WS had a few games to show off, the first being Coral Gardens by the same designer as Holy, and the second being Canvas Critters. This is by Katia Howitson and Mike Gugliano. You might know Katia best for her work on those board game mosaic calendars. I absolutely love those. This is going to be kind of in that style. Uh, where you're going to be using animal meeples to make various different shapes. It's a little bit more of a party game, but I really like the style on this. I think it's going to be a good one to watch out for. I stopped by the Dragon Egg Games booth, and I did get to pick up a copy of Kyperium, uh, which is a very interesting two-player heads-up game that gives your opponent a worker placement space for every card that you put down. And this is another one that I will be reviewing on a very, very soon episode of the podcast. At night, I was able to go to the FRG gathering, which was a lot of fun. I got to catch up with some friends there and check out some games. The reimagining of Yokohama looks amazing, and I might wind up upgrading my copy for this one. On other things, I did initially pass on a copy of Magic Maze Tower, since I didn't like the real-time aspects of the original, but I do think that the solo puzzliness of it is very clever. Also, the special rules being on each level and a solution QR code uh, being included is a very nice touch, so I may wind up actually making an exception and picking this up at some point. OctoQ by Carl Lang had one of the cooler mechanical puzzles I saw during the weekend. You're using a cube to pick up tiles and score them, and I like the possibility that it brings, and I'll be keeping my eye out for it. Lots of cool stuff to be done with magnets on that. And then finally, Babylon by Geek Attitude Games was so much fun to play a few rounds of. A three-dimensional puzzle, uh, very thinky with a very straightforward rules teach. Uh, kind of reminiscent of Santorini in a way, but not that heads up uh, puzzle. It's more of a, you know, trying to build things up and trying to work on your own thing. So very cool. Very, very excited for this. If I don't get a review copy, I will be picking this one up on my own as well. So I was able to pick up my copy of Burn the Fort. I was very glad to pick this up and talk more about it uh, since I backed it a while ago. Excited to see stories like this in the space. I have mentioned that a few times at this point. I do want to see more stories, more diversity, and things like this coming out are just warming my heart. 
I'm very glad to see that. I'm glad to hear the story behind this. I'm hoping to feature a little bit more about this on a upcoming podcast episode. And then Saturday, I got to meet Justin Gary, the creator of Ascension. We did start off our morning there. I played a lot of Ascension back in the 2010s when I was traveling on the road. And it was really just kind of cool to be able to meet Justin and, and chat with him. Ascension Legends is coming out. It is the first new Ascension game in a few years at this point. It should be available for late pledges soon. And I'm excited about this. It's bringing a lot of different elements from all the different sets in, including a couple of new ones. I also got to play Soul Forge Fusion. And while it's something that's normally not my speed, I did have a lot of fun with this. Probably not picking up a copy, but it was interesting to try that out. And then I went to the Cosmos booth, and I have talked endlessly about Nun Attack. That was reviewed on episode number 95. You can go back and listen to my thoughts on it. Spoiler alert, I am in love with it. I absolutely love this game, so I was excited to see it in person again. Dodo also looked like it had a very fun physical mechanism, probably not my speed, more of a kid's game, but I did really like what this did with a boulder that's rolling down a hill and controlled by magnets. I thought that that was fun. Belrati also looks like a pretty neat deduction game, probably not one that I'm going to pick up on my own, but one that I might play at some point if somebody has it. And then The Gang is a game that I did talk about, I think it was episode 94, basically cooperatively trying to predict uh, poker hands. And, and from someone who has played a lot of poker in her time, I had a lot of fun, even just with the demo, even more with the physical version. So I'm glad that I got to check this out, and then very glad that I got a review copy to talk about as well. I did get to swing by Cardhala. For those of you who don't know, Cardhala is basically a thing that happens at Gen Con every single year. A lot of collectible card game cards get built up into these massive structures and then destroyed at the end. I do believe it's a fundraiser, if I'm not mistaken, as well. And always fun to see this giant structure get you know built and then destroyed at the end of the convention. I then swung by Dead Alive Games. I got to check out Hissy Fit, which was a very very cute game about trying to get your cat to do things that it doesn't want to do. In addition to that, a Lunar Skyline is the newest game in the Lunar Rush series, which sounds like it's going to be very exciting. Dual suit trick-taking and some physical components that will make it unique as well. So looking forward to this one. I will be reviewing Cyber Pet Quest from them as well. So more Dead Alive Games content coming up soon. And stop by Paverson Games as well. And Luthier is the newest uh, game that Dave Beck has designed. Uh, of course, Dave basically explain this using a conductor's baton. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Distilled, uh, Dave goes over the top with everything. Uh, and one of the rewards in the crowdfunding campaign was actually this deluxe conductor's baton. This looks like it's going to be heavier, outstanding art, really intriguing gameplay. I do love hidden worker placement games. And then historically accurate patrons, so Dave basically went out and hired a consultant to make sure that everybody was historically accurate, which I thought was so cool. Also, this had a dice tower that I cannot pass up, and I want to show y'all what that was, and I'm in love. I can't wait for this to come in. Check this out. I know, I'm... I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. So that is a game that I'm very much looking forward to and I think is going to kind of hold up to Distilled as well as a favorite in my collection. I did conduct a interview with Joseph Frederick of Ludimus Games. You can listen to that on episode 93 of the podcast. 
to hear that. He also has a new game called Toppings, which I am extremely excited to see. We're Sinking is a fantastic game that he just came out with. That was his first published game, and I'm very interested to see what he's going to do with toppings. And then swung by Solis Game Studio Treat, please, looks absolutely adorable. You're basically trying to get as many treats as possible by doing cute stuff as a pet uh, from your owner. And this will also include a pledge tier that will get you and your pet into the game. Um, and yeah, I mean... Charlie needs to be in something. I'm just saying this will probably be one that I do wind up backing as well, which has been limited lately. I've been I've been good. I've been trying. So yeah, looking forward to treat, please. And also went to the flat out booth and got a preview of Knitting Circle. That is the newest game in the Calico. Uh, universe designed by Emily Vincent of Pink Hawk Games looks super cute and looking forward to that coming out as well. We did get to play Blood on the Clock Tower that night. I didn't have any video from that, um, but it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, I wound up getting back to the hotel room uh basically two o'clock in the morning. Uh, so this was definitely my late night. On Sunday, I only had one meeting. That was with the op and what an incredible booth the op had. They really killed it with their advertising this year from the balloon sculptures up front to their booth. The booth was multi-level. It was great for meetings, had a great view of the entire convention floor, and it was a very nice space to be able to sit and chat and I was very glad to be up there. Stock Exchange was the first game that I want to talk about. Surprisingly, not the only other plant commodities game released in 2024. I will be reviewing that and the other one very soon on a upcoming episode. Looks like it's going to have a nice theme and looking forward to uh, talking about that. Avatar The Last Airbender is the latest in their co-op deck builder series, much like the Toy Story Cooperative Deck Builder. This one is coming out. I have a history of really enjoying the gameplay on these, uh, so I will be checking this one out at some point. Uh, Gnome Hollow, everyone's talking about this. Check out my review on episode 93 to hear all about it. I've been talking about it for a while. Excellent game, gorgeous production right out of the box, and you can make it even more gorgeous with uh, some add-on tokens as well. And then finally, a upcoming game that I am so incredibly excited about is Tea Witches. This is the same design team behind Flamecraft. It looks so incredibly cute, and based on the mechanical teasers, this might be a early game to watch out for in 2025. And then I did get to swing by for an unofficial meeting at AEG. A couple of games to check out there. Misfit Heroes is using a card crafting style system like in Mystic Veil. Vale. You're using the heroes you craft to do battle and it has a very wild theme. Seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. They also had a gotcha machine. The, the cat kind of looked like Charlie, but unfortunately I didn't get one. It was a lot of fun. You know, it was my first one that I've done in quite a while and really enjoyed the experience. I did go home after Allie packed up, so basically the floor closed and then we headed up home. We swung by a really spicy Denny's, which I didn't feel comfortable <laughs> taking video of, and I won't elaborate here, but it was kind of a crazy experience. The joys of being out on the road as to queer women, apparently. So that was something. We were really glad to see Charlie again. We picked him up on our way home, and, you know, it's always good to see him. We're always very glad to get to snuggle with him and that when we get home. So overall, this was a great time. It's just such a big experience. Gen Con is crazy. It's a lot of meetings, a lot of business that goes on. You're going to stuff after hours that is also business focused. 
I'm very grateful to be able to do it and to cover it, but it's just exhausting. And I'm glad that I got to take a week and basically sit, recover, and hang out before things started picking up again. And it, as you can see, it took this long to get the video up and uploaded. I did have con crud after, so that wasn't good. But yeah, yeah. So it's an experience. I highly recommend it at least once for those who haven't been just to check it out, just to see how wild it is. I wouldn't recommend it as a first convention for anybody. I think you could do some other smaller ones first and then work your way up to this because it can be overwhelming. Our friends Zoe and Lizzie did get to go with us. It was a lot of fun to have them experience that and to have those kind of different perspectives on what was going on and, you know, their, like, overall astonishment at how big this place was. So it was cool to kind of have that, you know, view, which I'm just used to these things by now, but to have somebody's fresh set of eyes on it was pretty awesome. So next up is PAX Unplugged as far as conventions go. As far as I know, the next video that I will be putting out will be the Elder Scrolls video. I will be doing a review on that. I do feel like this game is big enough that I don't just want to stick to the podcast. I do want to have that in video form so that people can see, you know, kind of the pros, the cons, the people that should get this, the people that maybe should kind of think twice before picking it up. I've been playing quite a bit of it and really enjoying it, but it may not necessarily be for you. That's all I'm going to say. So that is a little teaser for what I have coming up. Thank you so much for watching. And again, apologies that this wasn't done sooner, but I wanted to make sure that I at least got it out at some point. So thank y'all. Take care and we'll see you soon.